entrance and uh, the mouth of the just man utters wisdom and his tongue tells forth what is just. The law of his God is in his heart. Good morning. The special intention for today's Mass is for George R. Nicola. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. Lord Jesus, you're a mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O oh God, who constantly raise up in your church new examples of virtue, grant that we may follow so closely in the footsteps of the Bishop St. Alphonsus in his zeal for souls, as to obtain the same rewards that are his in heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. In the beginning of the reign of Zedekiah, king of Judah, in the fifth month of the fourth year, the prophet Hananiah, son of Azur from Gibeon, said to me in the house of the Lord, in the presence of the priests and all the people, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, I will break the yoke of the king of Babylon. Within two years I will restore it to this place. All the vessels of the temple of the Lord, which Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, took away, from this place to Babylon. And I will bring back to this place Jeconiah, son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah. And all the exiles of Judah who went to Babylon, says the Lord, for I will break the yoke of the king of Babylon. The prophet Jeremiah answered the prophet Hananiah in the presence of the priests and all the people assembled in the house of the Lord and said, Amen. Thus may the Lord do. May he fulfill the things you have prophesied by bringing the vessels of the house of the Lord and all the exiles back from Babylon to this place. But now listen to what I am about to state in your hearing and the hearing of all the people. From of old, the prophets who were before you and me prophesied war, woe, and pestilence against many lands and mighty kingdoms. But the prophet who prophesies peace is recognized as truly, truly sent by the Lord only when his prophetic prediction is fulfilled. Thereupon, the prophet Hananiah took the yoke from the neck of the prophet Jeremiah and broke it, and said in the presence of all the people, Thus says the Lord, Even so, within two years, I will break the yoke of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, from off the necks of all nations. At that, the prophet Jeremiah went away. Sometime after the prophet Hananiah had broken the yoke from the off the neck of the prophet Jeremiah, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. Go tell Hananiah this. 
Thus says the Lord, by breaking a wooden yoke, you forged an iron yoke. But thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, a yoke of iron I will place on the necks of all the nations serving Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and they shall serve him, even the beast of the field I give him. To the prophet Hananiah, the prophet Jeremiah said, Hear this, Hananiah, the Lord has not sent you, and you have raised false hope, false confidence in this people. For this, says the Lord, I will dispatch you from the face of the earth. This very year you shall die, because you have preached rebellion against the Lord. That same year, in the seventh month, Hananiah the prophet died. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to our song, Lord, teach me your statutes. Lord, teach me your statutes. Remove me from the way of falsehood and favor me with your law. Take not the word of truth from my mouth, for in your ordinances is my hope. Let, let those turn to me who fear you and acknowledge your decrees. Let my heart be perfect in your statutes, that I may not be put to shame. Sinners wait to destroy me, but I pay heed to your decrees. From your ordinances, I turn not away, for you have instructed me. not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. He withdrew in a boat to a deserted place by himself. The crowds heard of this and followed him on foot from their towns. When he disembarked and saw the vast crowd, his heart was moved with pity for them, and he cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples approached him and said, This is a deserted place, and it is already late. Dismiss the crowds so that they can go to the villages and buy food for themselves. He said to them, There is no need for them to go away. Give them some food yourselves. For they said to him, Five loaves and two fish are all we have here. Then he said, Bring them here to me. And he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, and looking up to heaven, he said the blessing, broke the loaves, and gave them to the disciples, who in turn gave them to the crowds. They all ate and were satisfied, and they picked up the fragments left over, twelve wicker baskets full. Those who ate were about five thousand men, not counting women and children. The Gospel of the Lord. So there's a saying in medicine and particularly in surgery, do see one, do one, teach one. It's the idea that first you learn about a procedure and the concepts in the textbook and reading about it, then you see one done, uh, 
then you um, do one yourself, then you're able to teach one. It's the best way to learn, they say, a new procedure. And I think the step going from learning about it in a textbook to actually seeing it be done is critical. Now, I don't know about you, but no matter how much I read about some things, I, don't, I won't know how to do it until I see it done. In fact, some of us can use this in our lives. Maybe we want to do like a home repair or car repair or some type of art or craft. Uh, we can go to YouTube these days and to see it done, then it really makes sense. No matter how much we read and know and learn that Jesus was both God and man, it helps us to see both his divinity and humanity in action. When Jesus learns about the death of John the Baptist, he withdraws to a deserted place. In his human nature, Jesus experienced great sadness and despair at the loss of John the Baptist. He likely wanted to be alone in a deserted place in order to, to grieve the loss of his childhood companion. In this, we see a very human reaction of Jesus. In fact, we all need time to grieve the great losses in our lives. And sometimes we even need time in our daily lives, weeks and days, to grieve the hurts and disappointments that we experience. Maybe it's the hurt of a family member, the, the cross word of a friend or a co-worker. We all need time to slow down and reflect on that, to reflect on what's going on in our hearts and in our minds. In a lot of ways, this is a healthy human response. It's much better than ignoring the hurt and disappointment. It may even allow us to forgive more quickly. When we allow the hurt and disappointment to be ignored and to stew within us, we, we focus in on ourselves. We're unable to love and serve others. But when we slow down and process what's going on within us, then we're able to love and look outward to see the point of view of the other person. When we do this, we participate in both the divinity and the humanity of Jesus himself. When Jesus went to a deserted place after John the Baptist died, the crowd followed him. He insisted, instead of trying to uh, evade the crowd, he joined them in their suffering. He was moved with pity for them. Even in the midst of his own sorrow and grief, Jesus was moved with pity. And not only was he moved with pity, but he moved to action. He cured the sick among them. Brothers and sisters, Jesus cures our sicknesses. He heals our hurts and our pains. God has given us Jesus Christ, with whom and through whom we suffer. St. Paul says that God comforts us in all our afflictions, so that we may be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort with which we ourselves have received from God. There's no doubt that in his human nature, Jesus was afflicted at the death of John the Baptist, but he was comforted by God our Heavenly Father, and he was moved with compassion to care for others in his comfort. When we allow ourselves to be comforted by God, we can't help but be moved, but be moved with love for others. So whatever pain or affliction you may be going through, allow yourself to be comforted by God our Father. Suffer with and in the divinity of Jesus our Lord, and be strengthened by his most sacred body and blood to go forth and to comfort others in their pain and affliction. Gather together as one body in Christ we offer the following prayers and petitions. For those called to a religious vocation, may the Holy Spirit inspire them in courage and, generous, and generosity. Let us pray to the Lord. Amen. For non-believers throughout the world, may God open their hearts to know Him, love Him, and serve Him. Let us pray to the Lord. Amen. For those who hunger, may Christ, who offers us the true bread, 
satisfy their physical and spiritual needs. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for peace in our world, for the men and women of the armed forces, wherever they serve our nation, and for the safety of all first responders who serve our communities, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for an increase in vocations to the priesthood, religious life, and permanent deaction in our archdiocese, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for protection from storms during hurricane season, through the intercession of Our Lady of Prompt Succor, we pray to the Lord. Lord for those intentions <clears throat> that we hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord God, with hearts open to receive your everlasting love, we bring you these prayers and petitions, and we trust in your divine plan for us, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, with your goodness we have received for every hour. Fruit of the earth and the work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, with your goodness we have received the water. Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, to enkindle our hearts with the celestial fire of your Spirit, just as you granted that St. Alphonsus should celebrate these mysteries and by them offer himself to you as a holy sacrifice. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as on the festival of St. Alphonsus, you bid your church rejoice, so too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life. Teach her by his words of preaching, and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God, Amen. have you heard of the Lord, 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 the so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
a similar way when something was ended. He took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking in the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis our Pope, Gregor our Bishop, Shereen as Assistant Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who please you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the same instrument, formed by divine teaching, we dare to sing. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, 
Communion answered on, Behold, a faithless and whom the serve steward to give you. Amen.
God, who gave us St. Alphonsus to be, faithful, to be a faithful steward and preacher of this great mystery, grant that your faithful may receive it often, and receiving it, praise you without end. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. The Almighty God bless you. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth the Mass and Saint. Saint Michael the Archangel, the Foundation of God, the Lord of the Church, the Lord of the Church, the Lord of the Church. May God bless you.